Good morning. It's Nadine Toriello, licensed esthetician and your personal skincare guru with this week's skincare tip. This week's tip, skin cancer treatments. If you've been watching, you know that this series was inspired by my dear friend who had an aggressive squamous cell carcinoma. She kept delaying her doctor visit, but after a not so subtle hint from yours truly, she finally went and had it removed. The doctors originally cut the lesion out, but ended up using Moe's technique because the cancer was so aggressive. The consequences could have been dire if she had waited longer, but I'm happy to say she's healing nicely. In the last three videos, we covered skin cancer in its many forms and what causes it. So today, the last video in the skin cancer series, we'll talk about how these cancers are treated or removed. I think if you can better understand these treatments, you can discuss the best options for you with your physician. So how are basal cell, squamous cell, and even melanoma skin cancers treated? Most skin cancer can usually be treated with minor surgery that can be done in a doctor's office. And depending on the size, stage of development, and location of the lesion, your doctor may choose to use any of the following techniques to remove it. Topical treatments are the most popular for treating basal cell or squamous cell carcinomas. Lesions that may be superficial and don't extend very far into the skin may be treated with creams or ointments. Drugs like Aldara, Effudex, and Fluoroplex, as well as others, are used for several weeks to treat low-risk basal cell carcinomas and precancerous lesions. These topical forms of chemotherapy are sometimes used along with microneedling, but usually you're just sent home to use them daily. A word on these topical chemo products. They will cause open sores on all the areas where you applied them and leave the skin looking like someone put cigarettes out on you. You really must stay out of the sun at all costs during this process. Now minor basal cell or squamous cell lesions might be treated with dermabrasion or sanding the affected area of the skin with a tool to make way for a new layer of skin. Ablative and non-ablative lasers may be used Ablative lasers remove the top layer of skin, while non-ablative heats up the underlying tissue without harming the surface. They may also use extreme chemical peels like TCA. Cryosurgery is also used, and it is probably one of the most often used methods of removal. Basically, the doctor freezes the spot using liquid nitrogen. Excision. This is just a fancy word for cutting out the cancer spot and some healthy skin around it, and then stitching up the wound. My personal favorite is Mohs surgery. This is excision, and then they inspect the excised skin under a microscope. This requires stitching up the wound, and the process usually takes several hours or most of the day, as each layer of cells is inspected under a microscope to make sure that all of the cancer cells are removed. Again, this is my preferred method of removal, as all of the affected cells are removed, and there's a much lower chance of reoccurrence. For advanced stages of skin cancer or ones that have spread to the body, the following treatments may be used. Lymph node surgery. Your doctor may remove a piece of the lymph node, the whole lymph node, or several lymph nodes, and this uses general anesthesia. There are also medications for advanced cancer. Skin cancer that spreads to other parts of the body may be treated with Aravege or Odomozo. These medications may also be an option for people whose cancers haven't responded to other treatments. These medications may block molecular signals that enable the carcinomas to continue growing. The common side effects include hair loss, weight loss, nausea, and muscle spasms. Superficial radiation therapy, known as SRT, is up and coming because machines are getting smaller and more convenient for doctors to use. It is non-invasive and only goes about five millimeters into the skin. It's a very targeted high energy ray and that's used to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors. Now this is mainly used on non-melanoma cancers. So how do you protect yourself from getting skin cancer? Well, it's pretty easy. Avoid the sun during peak hours. Use broad spectrum sunscreen daily, even when it's cloudy and rainy, to expose skin and then apply frequently when you're outside. Wear clothing to cover exposed areas and absolutely avoid tanning beds. Now there are even preventative supplements such as vitamin B3 and HelioCare, which is a fern extract 
and they support your skin. Now, if you have been diagnosed with skin cancer, you're more likely to get it again. So please visit your doctor for regular skin checks. Well, this wraps up our four-part series on skin cancer. I hope you learned some new things. And like my dear friend that inspired this series, I hope that this is your not-so-subtle hint to go and get your skin checked. If you'd like to learn more, listen each week for your skincare tip with me, your personal skincare guru, Nadine Toriello, licensed esthetician. And if you have a question, post it in the comments below or send me an email through my website, flmindbodyspirit.com. Wishing you a spotastic day.